All right, today we're gonna be talking about airspace. Um, I have about two and a half weeks to my check ride, so I'm trying to get through all the lessons. But today we're gonna go through airspace, which I feel like is pretty cut and dry. Um, there's rules that we must follow in airspaces, and yeah. So basically, when you become a when you are a student pilot and you're getting your private pilot license. You need to make sure that you know these because once you become a private pilot and you're able to go fly on your own and do whatever, you need to know what all the requirements of the airspaces are and the rules and all of that so that you're not breaking a rule. And all right, so first we're going to start out with our regulatory airspaces. So we have regulatory and non-regulatory. Regulatory is like our class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Golf. First, we're going to talk about the floor and the ceilings of each. So to start off with Alpha. So our Alpha airspace is 18,000 feet and above, and that's an MSL. MSL and AGL can get a little bit confusing, so if you don't know what those are, MSL is mean sea level, and AGL is above ground level, and those are what our um, altitudes can be in. So they can either be AGL or MSL. Above ground level, that's just pretty self-explanatory. That's how high you are above the ground. And then mean sea level is more like a standard for all areas. So let's say you're flying by the beach. Obviously, um, your ground level is going to be way lower. And then if you were in the mountains, your ground level is going to be way higher. So the reason why our class alpha starts at 18,000 feet MSL is because we want that to be standard for everyone. So if we get, if we, so if class alpha started at 18,000 feet AGL above the ground level in the mountains, that would actually be like 22,000 feet. And then let's say we're at the beach and our class alpha starts at 18,000 feet above ground level. Well, that would actually be 18,000 feet MSL. So then we would have two different altitudes that class alpha is starting at and it wouldn't be standard for everyone and it has to be standard. So your altimeter that reads your altitude reads MSL. So when you're sitting on the ground at your airport, if your altitude of if the field elevation of your airport is 700 feet, then when you're sitting on the um, ground at your airport, your altimeter is going to read 700 feet because you're 700 feet above mean sea level. So then as you climb, your altimeter is just going to read where you're at mean sea level. So once you get to 18,000 feet, um, you are now in class alpha. I wanted to go over MSL and AGL because each airspace, um, their floors and ceilings are different, whether that it's recorded in uh, AGL or MSL so you just want to know the difference because it is important that's like all of like you have to be IFR to be flying at that altitude so in school while you're a student pilot you're a private pilot you're probably not going up to 18,000 feet MSL especially in the aircraft that we fly um, but still good to know it class Bravo class Bravo dimensions it gets a little bit trickier so class Bravo is going to be like Atlanta airports, Charlotte, Dallas, those are your really big airports and their airspaces are all different um, depending on kind of what's needed. So how they're shaped, if you look at it from the side view, is like an upside down wedding cake. So at the surface, the Class Bravo is very s small in comparison to the top part of it. So if you're flying close to the airport, um, the space that they're controlling around it is small. But then as you climb up in altitude, um, the controlled space gets larger. And this is just a general um, view of how it looks from the side. Each one is gonna be different, but they generally do not exceed 30 nautical miles wide and they go up to 10,000 feet MSL. So if you are flying near Bravo, it's very important to know where all these shelves are 
um, my airport that I trained at in Charlotte, we were underneath the uh, Bravo shelf. So our airport was like over here or something. So when you took off, you were fine to just do whatever, go wherever you want, but you had to make sure you watched your altitude because if you climbed up too fast and got up in here, then you're in their airspace and that's not allowed um, without making a call to them and getting a clearance in. So sometimes if you were doing a cross country or something and you took off and you're flying underneath this shelf right here, you would have to stay at like 3000 feet MSL until you clear that shelf. And then once you get out here, you have more space. So then you can climb up to 5,500. Um, but there are um, numbers in each shelf area that tell you how far they go up to. So, so up here, if you're flying in this area, it could say 100 over 60, meaning this part of the shelf is from 6,000 feet to 10,000 feet. Right. Class Charlies. All right, Class Charlies are a little bit more simple than a Bravo. So they also have layers to them, but it's generally only these two layers. So the airport's down here, um, and this is about five nautical miles wide across this bottom part. And this generally goes up to 1,200 feet AGL. So now if we see something like this, we need to do math. So let's say that the airport is sitting at 800 feet. That means that we need to add 1200 to 1800 to figure out where this part of the airspace starts in MSL. So it actually starts 10,000 feet MSL. Um, so that's generally five nautical miles apart and this will go from the surface up to that 1200 1, feet AGL. And then this is normally 10 nautical miles apart then we get into class delta. Class delta is really simple. Um, so we just have one thing, it's generally, um, class delta is generally four nautical miles across and goes up to 2,500 feet AGL. Um, when you're looking at it on four flight, uh, in the area of the airspace, it's going to give us so then it looks like this. That means that it's going up to 3,100 feet MSL. So if you're flying at 3,500 feet and that's what your altimeter is reading, then you're gonna be flying over top of this airspace. You don't have to worry about it. But if you're flying at 3,000 feet MSL, you're flying through this airspace and you do have to worry about it. Now we have class Echo and class Golf. Now I'm gonna kind of explain these together because these two get a little confusing. When I was in training, I kind of had a hard time figuring out like what was going on with these two. So basically, there's three different options for class E um, and how the airspace can be situated. So it can either start at the surface, it can start at 700 feet AGL, or it can start at 1200 feet AGL. If it's starting at the surface, then this is not a factor, class golf, we're not using it we're not departing into a class golf because we're departing straight into the class echo. If it starts at 700 feet AGL or 1200 feet AGL, um, then we have this area from the surface to class echo where we have no airspace. So that's where class golf comes in. So if class echo starts at 700 or 1200 feet, then we're departing into a class golf and then once we reach those altitudes, then we'll transition into the class Echo. So we can start at the surface, 1200 feet or 700 feet. So we, on our sectional, there's going to be a magenta shaded circle. So it's not just gonna be a sharp line, it's gonna be shaded. And that means that we're starting at 700 feet. So if you see an airport like that, you're departing into a class golf. When you get to 700 feet AGL, you're transitioning into the echo airspace. Then if we have a dashed magenta, that means our airspace is starting from the surface. So see an airport like that, you're departing straight into a class echo. 
then if we just have our airport just out in the open on four flight and there's nothing around it then that means it's starting from 1200 feet so we're departing into a class golf when it gets to 1200 feet we're transitioning into an echo and yeah so that's the so yeah that's class echo and golf okay now we're going to get into all the requirements of each airspace so we're just going to do Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Golf. Starting with Alpha, um, you do have to be instrument rated. And you have to have an ATC clearance. And your plane has to be IFR equipped. Bravo, you have to be a private pilot a student pilot with training and endorsement. You do have to have an ATC clearance. If we have to talk to ATC, we have to have a two-way radio and we have to have a transponder and ADSB out. So ATC clearance, we have to have two-way radios, transponder, and ADSB out. We also have to have a transponder and ADSB out in the mode C veil, which is um, usually just outside of the um, dimensions of the class Bravo airspace. You'll see on your four flight, there's dash lines and it says mode C veil. You have to have your um, ADSB out and transponder in that area. All right, class Charlie, you have to establish communications before you can enter. So you don't have to get a clearance from ATC, but you do have to make contact with them by you know, making your call and then they have to respond back to you saying your tail number and um, then you can enter into their airspace. Okay, you also have to have a transponder and you have to have a transponder and ADSB out if you're flying over class Charlie. So um, if you're flying through the airspace, need those two things, but also if you're flying over top of it. Class Delta, you also need to establish communications so you're just making your call making sure you hear your tail number and um, that you've established those communications before you enter you don't need a transponder or an ADSB out but if you do have a transponder it needs to be turned on so you can't have it turned off class golf there's no special equipment and there's no special rules so we're just going to go into how our airspaces are depicted on our sectional chart so how they look on our four flight sectional charts and our weather minimums because weather minimums are very important as you know we always get the weather before we go in a flight so if we're doing cross country and we're going to be flying through some different air spaces it's important that we know the weather along our route and know what those airspace weather minimums are so we know if we're able to fly through or if we need to divert and fly around the airspace for alpha there is no weather Minutes. Also, I'm going to throw in speed limits um, when I do the weather minimums just because I forgot to do that on the last one. But the speed limit in class alpha is Mach 1. Bravo. Just because there's no weather minimums in alpha obviously doesn't mean that you should go fly. So um, these are just the restrictions on weather, but also you should evaluate the weather before you go fly and see if it's within your minimums and you're capable of flying in those weather conditions. Bravo is going to be three statute miles clear of clouds. So your our visibility has to be at least three statute miles and we have to stay clear of clouds. Speed limit is 250 knots. All right, Charlie is three statute miles, one, five, two. One means that we have to be 
The one means that we have to be a thousand feet above the clouds, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontally. So, um, the way I remember which one is above and which one is below is that if you're flying above a cloud, it's harder for you to see where the cloud is at because you can't really see underneath you. Um, so we want more space, which is why we have a thousand feet of room. And we're flying under a cloud, you can just look up and see where that cloud's at and it's easier to tell where you're at. So we get a little bit less of a buffer. Um, so that's 500 feet. And the speed limit in class Charlie is 200 knots. Class Delta is also three statute miles, 152, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, 2,000 feet horizontally. And it's also 200 knots. Echo gets a little confusing because we throw in different altitudes. So if we are at or above 10,000 feet MSL, then our weather minimums are five statute miles, one, one, one. So we have to have five statute miles visibility. We have to be a thousand feet above the clouds, a thousand feet below the clouds, and one statute mile horizontally from the clouds. We're below 10,000 feet MSL. Then we're also going to be three statute miles, one, five, two. Three statute miles of visibility, thousand feet above, 500 below, 2,000 horizontally. Gulf is probably the most confusing because we throw in altitudes and we throw in day and night time. So we have 1,200 feet AGL um, below. So we're below 1,200 feet AGL. In the daytime, it's going to be one statute miles clear of clouds. Then if we're flying below 1,200 feet AGL at night, those conditions bump up to three statute miles and 152. Then we have from 1200 feet AGL to 10,000 feet MSL. We have daytime and we have nighttime. Daytime is one statute miles, 152, 1000 feet above, 500 below, 2000 feet horizontally, one statute miles of visibility. And nighttime is three statute miles, 152. Is above, 10,000 feet MSL, and this is regardless of day or nighttime. We have to be five statute miles, 111. All right, really quickly, I'm gonna do a little little drawings of what it will look like on a sectional chart. That way, if you're flying and you're using a sectional chart and you see an airspace coming up, you're able to identify what airspace that is. So this one is not depicted on our airspace because basically when we get up to class alpha at 18,000 feet, it's covering everything. So it's a, it's on top of all the other airspaces that are low to the ground. So if we were to show it on a sectional, it'd be covering up everything. Um, Bravo is solid lines and it's gonna look like this on a sectional. It's gonna have different areas. It's gonna be blue. Class Charlie is going to be magenta and it's going to be solid. Our delta is going to be blue and it's going to be dashed lines. Echo, like I said, it has three different variations. So we could just have an airport um, out in the open. We can have a circle that's kind of shaded. And then we can also have a dashed echo airspace. And that's really it for airspace. I feel like that's a good base to start off with. Um, I would definitely learn all of this and have all of this memorized. It's something that you should definitely learn like right off the bat because you're gonna start going on cross country flights by yourself. And the last thing you wanna do is not know your airspaces and fly through one or whatever and get a pilot deviation and get a phone number sent to you. You just don't want that to happen. So that is airspace.